Okay, today I'm going to talk about Turing machines abstractly in the category of polynomial functors. Um, it's actually a really nice story. So I'm going to assume you know what a polynomial functor is and what a morphism of polynomial functors is. Um, it's a natural transformation between them. But I'm going to assume also that you have some facility with that. So you know how to kind of think about it set theoretically. I'm also going to assume that you know what a Turing machine is, at least roughly. So my first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a Turing setup. That's like the mechanics. Then I'll define a Turing program. That's like a, the Turing, I think that's what's usually called the Turing machine. And then I will tell you like how to run it and stuff and show you that like the result comes out super easy from the abstract uh, uh, aspects of poly. Okay. So what is a Turing setup? Um, well, a Turing setup. This is like my term, but hopefully you'll find it to be appropriate. Um, consists of, that's a term being defined there, a tuple, a set of tape possibilities, tape T, processor interface P, mechanics mu, and empty tape E, where, so T is just any old set, um, P is a polynomial functor. Uh, this is the processor interface. This is like what the processor is allowed to notice and do in some sense. <clears throat> this is the only, this is really the only interesting part of a Turing setup. What Turing did was define, well, he defined this whole one, two, three, and four, okay? Um, e and T is the empty tape. And this is the mechanics of Turing setup. So now I'm gonna spend like four minutes trying to tell you what all these different things are in a special case. The tape, the processor interface, um, the mechanics and the empty tape. So let's start at the top here. A is a set called the alphabet. And throughout this talk, I'll just think of it as zero, one or blank. And we can think of T as A to the Z. Now again, T is completely abstract. It can be any set you want, but in, the, in Turing's original setup, T was functions from Z, like positions on a tape to an alphabet, zero, one blank. Maybe it was assumed that um, you could take a countable subset of this because you could assume that the, blunt, the tape never had, it always had bounded um, support. It was always blank almost everywhere. Anyway, so T is tape. Okay, so um, ways a tape can be. P is gonna be the processor interface. It's a polynomial functor. And what polynomial functor is it? Well, um, it's, Outputs what the what the processor kind of can do inside the Turing machine is it can command left or right or an element of the alphabet. So move left, move right, or print this. And what can it hear from the tape? It can hear what's at the read head. That's an element of the element of the alphabet. So P in this case is five y cubed or isomorphic to five y cubed. It's a little tiny polynomial, and part of what um, part of what Turing did was pick something pick p to be pretty small. Um, I, I, I'm wondering kind of what the smallest possible p is, like maybe 4y squared or even, is it possible that even 2y squared works? I don't know for p, but anyway, that, that, that would be interesting to know. Okay, so that's the polynomial functor for the processor interface, p, and now I need to give you an empty tape, so, uh, and I need to give you the mechanics, and the mechanics is the interesting part. Um, okay, so the empty tape, if you take a0 to be blank, in A, then I can just make everybody, every position in the tape go to that blank, and that's the empty tape. So that's how you define E. And finally, what is mu? So that's gonna be another two minutes or something. Uh, so it's that function there, okay? Now let's go look at it. It's this top line. I My job is to give you this top line here, okay? A to the Z y to the az, tensor lr plus a, y to the a, all mapping to y. Okay, that's my job. And um, 
I'm going to factor my job into two pieces, uh, mu1 and mu2. So here's p here. p is the polynomial interface. And I'm just going to kind of copy that straight down. And um, so my goal is to give you this part. That's like really mu1 there. And sorry for moving around. Um, and mu2. OK, so first I'm going to give you mu1. That's this map here. OK, so what does mu1 do? Uh, well, to give mu1, the second thing is a product. So to give a map from a to the z, y to the az to that product, I have to just give a map to, to its left um, factor and its right factor. But the left factor is super easy because it's just a uh, projection. So I just need to give you the right factor. And the right factor is what I'll do now. So I need a map from a map of polynomials like so. But if you're good with polynomials, you can turn that into a map of sets that takes a function from A to Z, a tape, takes a command, and returns a new tape. And what function should what function did Turing give us? Turing said, take the tape F and the command L and move the tape left. So take the tape that takes a natural uh, an integer and gives out the what the old tape gave out at that integer plus one that moves the tape left. Possibly it moves it right, but I don't really care because um, the next one will be the other one. F comma R goes to n goes to f of n minus one move right. And finally, if we want to print a, then what tape do we get? Well, we take a natural we take an integer. And if that integer is at the right head, then we write A. And if it's not at the right head, then we uh, just copy over what it was before. So now I've given you mu1. Wow. Now I've given you mu1. And my goal now is to give you mu2. So mu2 is this map here. And that is written right. Oh, so that map there of polynomials, if you're good with polynomials, you can un. Uh, wind it to see it as a map from a to the z. Let's see if I can do some color coding here. Um, a to the z and l r plus a, right? I don't know if that color coding is helping much. Um, l r plus a, those are here and here. And um, and go to LR plus A and A. OK, so what it does is it just takes a tape F and kind of like pops off 0. And it takes this one, and it just feeds it directly. So it takes the command from the processor and feeds it to the tape, and it takes the value of the entire tape and asks what's happening at the read head. Um, which is zero. OK, so that's the whole story. I have told you the mechanics of the Turing machine. It broke it down into two pieces, one where like the tape kind of um, understands what commands are, left, right, and, and print. And in the other one, mu2, uh, the two systems learn how they interact. Um, there's a read head and the command is sent directly to the tape for it to act on, on the tape position. OK, so that's the story. That's the mechanics. Um, hopefully, you believe that a Turing setup really is the mechanics of a Turing machine. So a Turing program, let me define that. This will be shorter. So def. A Turing program, I think this is what's usually called the Turing machine, but I'm not sure. Maybe the Turing machine is the Turing setup and the Turing program. So if you're in a setup, if you've got a setup around T, your tape, your polynomial um, processor interface, your mechanics, and your empty tape, that's what you're going to need, um, then a Turing program consists of a tuple of just three things. 
s the set of states pi the program and s not the empty uh, the uh, initial state so s is just a set elements are called states pi is a map from s y to the s to p plus one i'll explain that in a minute that's the program that's the most interesting thing that's left in this concrete for the concrete piece um, and then s naught is an s the initial state so what's going on here what is this program thing it's a map from s y to the s to p plus one what's up with that so remember p is like five y cubed it's this little tiny polynomial and here i've written uh what i said pi was supposed to be right s y to the s to p plus one well the category of polynomials is extensive, which means that I can look at what happens at the one, oops, what happens at the one part and what happens at the y cubed part, and then I can separate them. So I can pull back both of those things and I'll get, um, since these maps are both Cartesian, the pullback of Cartesian maps is Cartesian, it's not too important. Um, all I'm saying is that when you're done pulling back, you get, there's like no data here, like there's just this map, this subset S prime of S, S double prime of S, and uh, no data about it. But those are the S prime, S double prime are like halt states. But S prime are the non-halt states. So if you read out what this map is, this is like the majority of, of the program. The majority of the program, other than to tell you what states are halt states, the rest of it is the following you unwind this map of polynomials and you get two functions. One I'll call do, it takes an element of S prime, a non-halt state, and gives you either zero, one, blank, L or R. So that's like in a non-halt state, what do you wanna to do to the tape? And a next function that takes a non-halt state and zero, one or blank, and gives you a state, either non-halt or halt. And that is the program. That is a Turing machine or maybe a Turing machine is a program with the mechanics also. Okay, now I'm gonna go a little bit more abstract. We've done all the concrete stuff. You now hopefully believe that a Turing setup really is the mechanics and a Turing program really is what people call a Turing machine. And now I'm gonna tell you some abstract stuff. You might not know what a Kufri comonad is and stuff like that. So this part might be a little bit, uh, there might be a part that's difficult here, but what's going on? So how do we run a Turing machine? Well, note we have this initial state in S and we have this initial uh, tape, the empty tape. So we can think of this as a map from Y to S, Y to the S because a map from Y to something is just, is just a position in it. So it's just an element of um, S. So this is S naught and this is E. And so together we get a map from y to um, the tensor product of these two. And the tensor product is this. So it's just another like um, state comonad. ST is a set of states now. So what's going on is this comonad is gonna be kind of telling us about states and tapes that are um, updating each other now. Anyway, let's keep going. So this is S Y to the S tensor T Y to the T. And this is S naught E. Okay, now I have from pi, the program, I get a map from this one to P plus one. And I'll just carry the tape along for the ride, the tape machine. But let's write out what that is because um, it's a P tensor T Y to the T. Remember tensor distributes over coproduct. So this is, and one tensor anything, one is Y to the zero. And so Y to the zero tensor anything is just the, is just the positions. So it's just T in this case. Um, but now we're pretty good because the Turing setup is a map from t y to the t tensor p to y so that's
say P tensor T Y to the T to Y. That right there is the, um, is the setup, the mechanics. That's the mechanics plus T. And so this guy here is like the run of the machine. It's some kind of dynamical system with states S times T. So the states of the machine and the tape together, the product of those are the states of this dynamical system. And the interface is Y plus T, meaning this thing, well, I'll, it, it'll become clear pretty soon. It's not already, but basically, um, yeah, let's get abstract here. So, because we've already done the concrete, we're tired of that now. So ST wired the ST is a comonad. It's the state comonad. So it maps to co-free that like this map here factors as, um, as co-free Y plus one or Y plus T it factors that way. So this is a co-functor now. Um, well, that's great. And now we get this. So this is like, this is like the run of the machine and this is like the result. So what in the world is that guy? Well, a map from Y to anything like co-free of Y plus T is the same thing as just an element of co-free of Y plus T of one. But that's the terminal co-algebra of y plus t. And if you calculate out what that is, it's going to be um, natural numbers. So what we call the run, uh, result is an, is an element of naturals and a tape or um, infinite run forever. So, so as a result, Abstractly, what we get is like how many, how long it took, um, how long it took, and the value of the tape, or run forever. We either get one or the other. Maybe I'll erase that. And so that is the result of running the Turing machine. And we got it completely abstractly from the setup that was all abstract. result of running a Turing machine given this mechanics is, um, is an element of naturals, how long it took to run, and the final value of the tape, a function from the integers to A, or it runs forever. And this was known completely within poly. We don't have to like talk about the computation. It's all abstract. Um, the only thing concrete here is like showing that the usual example is such a thing. Okay, thank you very much. Um, please email me if you have questions. Let me write my email. Okay, thank you.